We've talked about GraphQL multiple times on this channel, but we haven't completely covered what is GraphQL in Shopify, as well as the tools that you can use to test GraphQL queries and mutations. So let's do that after this intro. So let's start this video by answering the question, what is GraphQL? GraphQL is a query language for APIs and a runtime for fulfilling those queries with your existing data. In simpler terms, GraphQL gives you the ability to retrieve or modify an existing data from an application by making queries or mutations. So with that said, you're probably familiar with REST. It's another way to ask or modify data from an application. One of the differences between GraphQL and REST API or REST is the amount of API endpoints. With REST, you have this oh, you have this API endpoints like product API, webhook API, script tag API, the list goes on. Whereas with GraphQL, you only have this one API endpoint where you can send your HTTP request. So with that said, GraphQL is better than REST for known reasons. And one of the reasons is that GraphQL prevents overfetching or underfetching, which means for each request, you get the exact data that you're looking for. In REST, most requests do overfetch or underfetch. Let's use the Shopify API as an example. Let's say we use the following API endpoint. By using this endpoint, you get all of the products from your Shopify store, including their properties and fields or fields. So what are these properties? These are the ID, the title, the body HTML, the variants, the images, and so on. Now, what if you only need the ID and the title of the products? That's an example of overfetching since we don't really need the other properties. And having these properties that we don't need can be very inefficient, not just for our application, but also for Shopify. In contrast to overfetching, underfetching is when you don't get enough data from a single request. Let's use the same API endpoint as an example. Let's say we want to get the images of the product variants. So by using the product API endpoint, you can get the variants of the products. Unfortunately, there are no images field in the variants field. So what you're going to do is to create another request or HTTP request to another API endpoint by passing the product ID as well as the image ID. So you see, you had to make two requests just to get the images from the variant API, and that is very inefficient. This is where GraphQL comes in. You create a query, and then in this query, you specify the data that you only need. This is an example of a GraphQL query. You create an object and then specify the fields that you want to get. Now, I mentioned object, and that's because, if you notice, the structure of this object or this example kind of looks like a JSON object, right? You get the main object, then inside of it, it's nested by another object, then finally the data, or you can say fields. This is how query is a structure, which makes it a little different compared to REST API. However, with GraphQL, we have full control over our HTTP requests or queries and mutations. So you see, we not only avoided underfetching and overfetching, but we also avoided making multiple API calls. Now, where do you send this GraphQL query language data? You can send this query to a GraphQL endpoint, like this as an HTTP POST request. Now that I mentioned POST, you're probably thinking right now, where are the GET, POST, PUT, and DELETE? In GraphQL, there are only two actions that you can make, query and then mutations. Query is the equivalent of GET. This is what you're going to use if you want to retrieve something from Shopify API server. Whereas mutation, this is the equivalent of POST, PUT, and DELETE. This is what you're going to use, or mutation is what you're going to use if you want to modify or delete a data from the Shopify server. Okay, so now that we know what is GraphQL, let's learn about the tools that you can use to make GraphQL request. The first tool that you can use is curl. If you're a big fan of curl commands, or if you want to use PHP, you can check out the following video where I showed you how to use um, curl to make GraphQL queries or mutations. I'll put its link in the video description below or you can check out the icon right over here. The second tool that you can use is the graphical IDE. It's an IDE or integrated development environment made for testing out GraphQL endpoints. Luckily for us, we do have a graphical explorer that we can use to play around and test GraphQL queries. 
experience. This is Shopify Admin API Graphical Explorer. This is where you can try making queries, but unfortunately, you cannot do mutations in this app or in this explorer. If you want to build not just queries, but also mutations, you will have to install the graphical app to your Shopify store or Shopify development store. Okay, so we can just do that in the future, but for now, let's just focus here in the example that we have in the Explorer. Here we have the following field called shop, and we are using the property name. If we execute this query using display button right over here, we will receive the following JSON response with a data property. And in this data, we get the shop and the name of the Shopify store. Now notice that the structure of the JSON response matches the structure that we set up here in the left side of the Explorer. So if you add another property here, say for example, we get the ID of the shop, you will receive the JSON response with the same structure. Now let's try to use the example that we mentioned in this video. Let's use the product API. Here, use the products field all right, so before we continue, there are times that a query or a field will ask you for an argument. To pass an argument, you will have to create a set of parentheses. Then inside of this parentheses, you will have to supply an argument. So for example, let's use the first. Now Shopify provides a very good documentation about queries and arguments. So if you'd like to learn more about it, I highly recommend you check it out. I'll put its link in the video description below or you can check out the no, you can just check out the description below. Though, as soon as you open the parentheses, the graphical app will also provide you suggestions like so. And if you hover a field or an argument, it will give you the following card where you can click the same field or argument and it will open this documentation, this, this documentation on the right side. Okay, so going back here, the first argument asks for an integer value. So if you hover this argument, as you can see, like I said, it gives you the following card. It's asking for an integer. So we can just give this um, like a number, like five. So what does this mean? This means that we want to get the first five products from our Shopify store. That's the first argument. If you want to use the last, it will give you the last five products from your Shopify store. Okay, so like I said, you can check out the documentation of this argument. I'll put its link in the video description below. Now, since we're using a plural field, products, that's plural, we're going to need to use the edges and then node for pagination. I'm going to create a separate video for pagination because that'll just make this video very long. It's already long anyway. So inside of this, we can set up the edges and nodes. And then inside of the node field, we can start getting the data or the, yeah, the data that we need. So say for example, um, let's use the ID and then the title of the product. Now, if we execute this query, we should have the following JSON response. And that's pretty much it. This is the first video for GraphQL series. In the next video, we will learn about GraphQL mutations. And we will also learn how to install the graphical app to a development store. And if you enjoyed this lesson, let me know by hitting the like button and sub to the channel so you won't miss our future uploads. Now, once again, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.